Hi everybody, it's Simon from Bartol Biomechanics. This is the special members only area, so thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate your support. What we're doing here today is um, a series of short videos just for members, and I'm gonna be looking at some injury issues. Uh, we're talking a little bit about footwear, and we're gonna finish up by having a look at uh, my, uh, my special 10 second gait analysis, which I hope really helps you. I'm trying to make this a little bit um, a little bit easy to, uh, to digest for everybody. So there's some medical information and there's some information that's designed more for technical retail. Uh, so just bear with me with this one. Uh, hopefully there'll be something for everybody. The first of these uh, videos, we're gonna talk about anterior knee pain, a super common problem in, uh, in sports medicine. We tend to see it in a certain age demographic, so it's very, very common in, in younger women. So um, women in the age bracket around 15 to 18, they have a few things conspiring against them. So they have major uh, changes in biomechanics. There are major changes in, uh, in, in the way muscles function and in particular muscle imbalance. And that can have a really big effect on the way the kneecap moves across the joint. And ultimately it can uh, result in the, in the problem that we call uh, patellofemoral syndrome or pain around the, uh, the kneecap. So what I'm gonna do now is give you some idea of how I examine this, um, what I'd typically look for, and, and how I would, I would think about treating the condition. I use the TOTAP system, which stands for Talk, Observe, Touch, Active Testing, um, Passive Testing, and Special Testing. It's just a good way for me to, to define how I go about an examination routine. For me, one of the most important things of all is the talk side of it. I really want to get as much history as I possibly can on this condition. We need to know whether there's been uh, any other incident that may uh, underline a potentially more serious knee injury. We've got to get that information. So before you even think about touching the knee, talk, get the history, observe. Is it red? Is it swollen? Um, is, what, ask about the pain, so ask what sort of pain it is. Is it sharp? Is it stabbing? Is it dull? Does it ache? These things all give you very important information about what you might be dealing with. Okay, now in terms of uh, what we're going to actually look at the knee, let's go down and have a look at the knee here. Um, I've talked to the patient, I've got some idea about the, uh, the mechanism of injury. Now I'm having a look at the kneecap and I'm specifically wanting to have a look, is there any swelling in the region of the, of the knee? Um, I use a, a special test called a wipe test, which means that I can uh, wipe my hand on the medial side of the knee. If there's any swelling here, we'll see it bulge out on the lateral side here. Um, and then you can do the same thing. You can just wipe your hand across here and it will fill medially as well. So you'll see that swelling moving from medial to lateral side. Swelling is a very common feature of patellofemoral syndrome. So we quite often see some quite major swelling. So that's just something to look out for. Put your hand on the knee. Is it hot? Does it feel as if it's inflamed? The great thing about the human body is you've always got a control limb. So always make sure you examine the contralateral limb as well, the other limb. Make sure that you've got that reference point. Is it one side hotter than the other side? Is there swelling on one side that's not on the other side? Okay, so once we've had a bit of a, a think about that and got some general idea of, of what we're dealing with, I want to get a picture of the, uh, the mobility of the kneecap. So I want to have some visualization of where the kneecap is sitting um, on the actual joint. Now, as you know, the kneecap sits inside a groove. So it sits inside a groove on the, uh, the uh, tibiofemoral surface. It's called the trochlear groove. One of the big issues with patellofemoral pain is if the kneecap's not sitting square in that groove, then it impinges on one side or other of the trochlear groove, and that's one of the problems we have. So some of the things you'll look for here are the size of the kneecap. Is it large? Is it small? That can be an issue. Is it sitting high? We call that patella baja, uh, sorry, patella alta or is it sitting low? We call that patella baja. Probably the most important thing of all is, is it sitting square across the knee joint? Is it actually sitting um, nice and, and level in the midline here? Now, one of the ways that you can test for that obviously is visually. What I often teach people is to imagine or even draw a quadrant here. So just draw a simple cross on the kneecap, then you get, can get some idea of where it's sitting. Most importantly, now we're gonna get the kneecap, the patient's gotta be nice and relaxed, and we're gonna move it to the end of its range laterally, okay? And when we do that, that's testing tightness of the structures medially, and then we're gonna move it to the end of its range medially, which is testing tightness of structures on the lateral side. Now, there should be approximately equal movement in each direction. 
Um, if you've got more movement in the lateral direction, it means that maybe you've got some tightness of the lateral structures here and perhaps some weakness of the muscles on the inside of the knee, especially vastus medialis obliquus, a very important muscle in terms of this condition. So just have a think about that. If you're moving it more laterally, then it means that perhaps you've got some tightness in the medial structures, um, and that again means that the kneecap's not, not sitting uh, too well on the joint. The other very important thing is to, to get some appreciation of whether there's any side-to-side -side tool of the kneecap. So it can actually be elevated on one side and depressed on the other side, so you've got to get some feeling for that. These are the most important things. Um, I think most of us use a, a technique of strapping which was pioneered by an Australian physio, Jenny McConnell, who's done an enormous amount of work on this. It's an incredibly reliable, incredibly simple taping to apply to the kneecap and basically what that does is it will distribute the kneecap in whatever direction you want it to go. So if you want to move it more laterally, well then that's where you can go with this taping. If you want to move it more medially, you can do that also. And you can also uh, control for this tilt on the kneecap. Uh, so perhaps we can do a short video on that another time. Um, but McConnell taping, very, very good. Now the other things that you'd probably be wanting to have a bit of a, a, a look for here, um, crepitus. I see a lot of people who move a knee joint through a range of motion like this and they've got their hand on the kneecap. They're looking and listening for any crackling in the kneecap and I can actually feel that in, these, in this kneecap. Um, I don't know if this is a terribly reliable test because you're not putting the, uh, the patient or the client in a physiological position, in other words you're not putting them under physiological load. This is non-weight bearing, it's not terribly relevant. So if you want to test it that way that's fine, but I'd have, um, I'd have the, uh, the athlete standing and I'd get them to do a squat um, under load, under their normal load, and I'd be listening to what was going on with that kneecap. Alrighty, so that's the basic examination for anterior knee pain. The other things that you need to be looking for here um, there's now a really good body of research that says that lower limb biomechanics are very involved in this. Um, a lot of research looking at um, foot pronation, subtalar joint pronation, and how that relates to anterior knee pain. The association here is that as your foot pronates, your tibia internally rotates, and that tends to change the alignment of the kneecap over the joint. So by looking at, at, at that issue, um, you can often get very good results with anterior knee pain. However, please do not fall into the trap of thinking that just by applying an orthotic device that you're going, you going to fix all the problems around the kneecap. If you only look at the foot, then you've missed a, a really large part of the equation here. It's very, very important to have a look at what's going on um, more proximately. Proximally, it's very important to look at core strength. It's very important to look at glute strength in particular, and you've got to look at that in physiological range. Um, so we've got to make sure that We've got our, our 15, 16, 17 year old person coming with anterior knee pain. It's absolutely imperative that you look at them walk and also run and try to get an understanding of what's going on at the level of, of their hips and their core because that can play a very large role. And that's what we're going to ha have a look at right now.